and gentlemen, I'm about to introduce to you a world-class mixologist. Hello, I'm going to take my... Hello, a world-class mixologist. The Heston Blumenthal of cocktails. A maestro. A revolutionary. The king of mixologists. He's not just a bartender. He's a bartender whose reputation is both giant and bulletproof. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Tony Conigliaro, <laughs> AKA our more science student. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tony. <laughs> Hello. Tony, the stage is yours. Welcome to Lagos. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let me get some more Lagos love. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so before we get into the business of the day, I've been doing a lot of research on you. Now, I read something about Tony, and in this, in this feature, he had said, okay, let me, let, me, let me give you a little story. In a little corner, I don't know, for those of you who have been to London, can I get the London people here? Say, woo! There is a bar on 69 Colebrook Row. It's called The Bar With No Name. Tony, is the man who handles all the business in that bar. Now, in this feature that I read, Tony had said he served a drink. It's called the Perrier Oyster, okay? Now, you guys are not familiar with it because you are not really global. It's a Perrier Oyster. And he said, yo, you know it. Okay, Tony, she knows your signature drink. I'm so proud of her. Okay, so he said he stood in the corner of his bar and he watched this lady have a drink, the yep. Perrier Oyster. Tony, and you said you like to watch the expression when people have it for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I want to believe you're going to make us feel good. Tony, I want to feel good. <laughs> Whatever you do now, I want you to make me feel good. Okay? Yeah. So let's get into the business of the day. What are we doing today? So uh, what I was going to do is show some slides of where we're based, what we do, how we do it. Um, again, talk about simplicity like Chef Raphael's did just now, brilliant uh, chef. I used to work with him years ago. We used to work at the same Japanese restaurant by coincidence, we're on stage here together. And um, yeah, just go through some of the way we do things because it's very different from your usual way that bars run. Um, and let's go. Uh, you guys will not understand what Tony is saying. I'm sure. <laughs> if you heard what he said, raise up your hand. It's a lie, you are lying. <laughs> I will interpret it. Tony, let's get to the business. Let's go. I'll interpret okay. everything that he's doing today. As, uh, again, as, uh, like Chef Raphael said, one of the important things I think that we do is uh, we keep things simple. If we can take things away and leave the core value, the core things that represent what we do there without all the extra extraneous stuff, that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, Johnny Ives is one of my heroes. He's the guy who designed the iPhone. And this is a little sentence that I think we kind of live by. Okay. Uh, I think there's... Oh, okay. Ah, that's so, Colbrook Row. 69 Colbrook Row uh, opened up nine years ago. And it's a 40-seater uh, bar. Um, and it was based around... Slow down. Uh, it was based around um, a stage set and okay. keeping things simple because mm -hmm. all our venues are based around the people. Okay. Uh, the drinks come seconds. You know, the service is super, super important. Again, a, a lot of that I took from, um, you know, being in Japan and looking at how Japanese service works and how you could really excel uh, and make sure that your guest always feels like number one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cool. The Drink Factory. So okay. everything runs through the Drink Factory. Drink Factory is our research and development lab. Uh, it's a kitchen that uh, Mark here works at. This is Mark, by the way. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we do our research and development there. Uh, we make all our ingredients there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the head office for all the finance. And one of the things I think that Drink Factory allows us to do is be more creative than anybody else. Okay. Uh, you know, to create, and I'll talk about this a bit more later on, to create chaos, creativity, okay. you have to be very ordered. Okay. So everything here is very, very ordered. In all of those fridges, there's a very particular kind of ingredient that's labeled, that's, okay. 
you know, ready to go that is, it has date on it and you okay. know when it's going, when the deliveries are happening and stuff like that. Right. Um, but apart from that, we run wild with ideas, with concepts. Okay. Uh, and, you know, creativity runs our business. Okay. Oh, yeah. Talking about creativity. So another thing that I had read about you was you said you're not a scientist. Because, see, Tony does this magical drink where he puts perfume. Perfume? You do this perfume uh, sugar thing and then you put it in uh, what, uh, what I do is... I translate, oh, what I did in that particular occasion, yeah. I translated, and I can't, I can't tell you which perfume, because they sort of <laughs> I remember, me. it was Chanel, Chanel I'm not allowed five. to say that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I translated the perfume from the, the, you know, the actual ingredients in the perfume yeah. to, to food safe mm -hmm. ingredients. So mm -hmm. I literally, like, like you would translate a language, translated that so that, and then I put a couple of drops of that on a sugar cube, and then put that in a glass, topped it up with champagne. So you smell the perfume, the perfume. above. All right. So in but Nigeria, it tasted like the floral. We'll call that. That's why I introduced you as AKA Awomo Science Students. Ah. You know, all those people <laughs> who mix. So he says he's not a scientist, actually. He's a romantic and you're, you're an a artist. A magpie. Yeah. yeah. I, st I studied art for five years five at years. art school. Uh, okay. Again, my parents weren't too happy about that. Okay. Um, you know, uh, get a, you know, do a proper degree, do, a, you know, the usual stuff. Um, but that, that served me very, very well because okay. what it's allowed me to do is kind of think outside the box. Okay. Uh, and that is, uh, again, like I say, that, that is what kind of makes us uh, ahead of the curve with, you know, ideas and, and ways of doing things. Okay. Now, I don't know if you, you, you know this, but there's a huge... Um, audience currently in Nigeria in terms of like mixologists. So the other day I was at I was at this bar and I was having like one or two cocktails and I said to the guy, you know, we're having this class at GT Bank Food and Drink and you need to come and meet Tony, he's a mixologist. And he goes, I'm a mixologist myself. Like so <laughs> what are you talking about? But how many mixologists do we have currently in the audience? Can I say hands up please? Fantastic. Jibo you know. Hands up mixologist? <laughs> Not private ones, the ones who do it as a profession. <laughs> not the ones who mix, not I'm still Malta and egg. <laughs> Mixologists, real ones, not cook, not vodka and, uh, <laughs> vodka and sprites. Okay, all right, so we have so many. So they're all here, they want to know what exactly you're going to do today. So what are um, you doing? Well, we thought it'd be quite funny. We, we created a, a drink called Snow. Okay. So we thought we'd bring you some snow to snow. Nigeria because mm -hmm. I don't think you get much with this heat. <laughs> so we thought you'd cool you down. <laughs> the sun. <laughs> no snow. <laughs> and the sun. Sun. And don't then uh, we're also going to make our version of a Negroni. Does everyone know the Negroni as a cocktail? So we're going to make our version of that. We're going to make a normal version, then we're going to make a, okay. uh, our right. version of it. So as what well. are we doing first? Cool. Um, well, let's make, let's do the Negroni. Okay. So, does everyone know what is in a Negroni? There's a lady at the back. Can I get an assistant there, please? She does. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Uh, it's gin, Campari, sweet vermouth, equal parts. Perfect. Oh, you mixologists, if you're not answering questions, you'll be in trouble, oh. <laughs> Okay. So what are we doing first? Um, so it's literally equal parts, stirred down. Some people build it, we stir it down. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's one of the most simple drinks. You know, it's one of those drinks that's universal across the world. You can okay. find it in any decent bar, okay. you know, kind of hotel bar, cocktail bar, all over the world. Okay. Uh, you can make it at home so so easily you just need the three ingredients mm. and some ice do you want to uh, take it through with the audience again what did we pour inside so yeah. we have uh we had sorry um campari campari sweet vermouth which is the red vermouth okay and gin and gin okay when you choose your gin always try and choose a gin around 40 percent abv mm. okay Who could put their hand up first? Mm -hmm. Lady there. 
<laughs> that was quick. <laughs> okay. So, as a contrast, what we're now going to do is make the same drink, but the way we make it for one of our venues, okay. uh, Termini. Um, so this is where kind of, even though I'm not a scientist, ideas from science come, come of course, of across. Course, of course. So we pour exactly the same ingredients okay. in equal measures uh, into, uh, into the cup. The measuring cups. Uh, okay, while he does that, do we have any questions for Tony currently? I'm just going to take two questions before, so we continue with, uh, with the process. Questions? Okay, we have a man here. Okay, Tony, how are you? Good, thank you. Yourself? You have an Italian surname. Do you, are you Italian background? My, uh, I've got a funny background. It's, my father is Italian, my oh. mother is Australian Irish, oh. but I grew up in London. Oh, so mixed. Anyway, Tony, is it all about a passion or the profit? You know, a bar needs finances. You've been around the world. You say you've been in Japan before. So now you're based in London in the UK. So is it just the passion or you really need to make money from being a uh, bar owner? Um, if I got the question right, it's about making money from being a bar owner. Is it, be, is it all about the passion and profit? What's uh, your passion? Is it passion or is making it a, a profit? Is it the passion or the profit? What is it for you? It's passion, 100%. Uh, I think, you know, if you don't do things with passion, people don't feel passion. Okay. You know, if you don't put all the love in, the love doesn't come out the other side. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's very important. If people just do things for money, they just, you know, feel that it's for money and they feel the, 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 the divide. Um, most of the people I know that put lots of love into what they do, mm -hmm. you know, get rewarded with money because people go to them, like Chef Raphael just now. Exactly. You know, people go to his restaurant because they feel his passion for his food. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, all, all the best chefs I think in the world that I've been to and I've seen, you can feel their love for what they do come through in their food. If you go to somewhere that's just about money, you aren't going to get the same quality or this, you're not going to want to return. Okay, let's see what Mark is doing here. What does cool. Mark do? Okay, so, what we've done is we've poured equal measures of the same three ingredients. Okay. We're now well, what, what sealing that into a sous vide bag. You've no, probably you seen these. You need to tell us, what is this? Uh, these are pink peppercorns. Oh, okay. So we put all of that together mm -hmm. uh, and then we cook it in a... We cook it? Yeah. Cook. Cooking of sorts. I see. Guys, we're cooking the drink. <laughs> um, and we'll cook this at 52 degrees okay. uh, for 20 minutes. 20 then, minutes. Yeah. Okay. So it's very precise. Okay. <laughs> and this will get me high like... Uh, I'm not sure it'll get you high, but it will get you, may get you a little bit tipsy. 20, 20 <laughs> minutes? Yeah. Okay, cool. No problem. We're here. Okay. So what's happening next? Cool. Um, can we have another slide? Oh, the slide. Okay. Okay, while we wait for the slide, yeah. you had mentioned all of these other bars, but you haven't mentioned Soho. How was that? What was the experience like at Soho? Soho. Well, everything we do, what we do is we, you know, we look at the area that we're going into. Okay. Because even within London, you have, you know, you have Knightsbridge, you have Mayfair, you mm -hmm. have Soho, you have Angel, mm -hmm. you have all of these different areas. Not everything fits. For the same for the same thing and the same you know yeah, you know for the same people. account. Mm -hmm. So what we always do is we look very precisely at what kind of people go to those places. Okay. What kind of offering they want. Okay. What kind of uh, you know atmosphere that we need to create to okay. be able to you know get them to come back. So with Soho Bartomini, what we did is um, oh. created. Uh, uh, an Italian ah, coffee shop, I see. aperitivo bar, Th and that's where these are served. This. And the, we, we kind of wrote a script for the bar okay. so that you had a very particular ambiance and feel. Okay. Uh, the drinks were uh, very kind of precisely kind of curated. What I wanted them is to look like little jewels. So is this that is the name the of that drink? This is the name of the drink oh, we're also one. making. Okay, yeah. okay, all right. Um, then we got the, um, oh, sorry, one more. 
<laughs> you make but, iPhones? Well, yeah, we don't make iPhones. Not yet. The other way, other way. One more, oh, one more. I... There. Uh, we've got all the labels made for the bottles, so the bottles, uh, the drinks are poured into the glass at the table. Oh, so okay. it's a different kind of style. Everything is based around an Italian train station because what we loved about Soho, no one actually lives in Soho. They just pass through, come in yeah. and come out, mm -hmm. come in, come out, like mm -hmm. a train station. Okay. So the whole theme of it was to create this really busy, fast bar okay. based around this Italian kind of concept. Okay, going by this, that then means that you're ready for the Nigerian market because we're ready for you. Good. So when Can't are you coming in? Um, we're hopefully going to taste a lot of stuff tomorrow. I'm sorry? We're, we're going to go and taste stuff tomorrow in the market. That's not oh, what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Oh, no, actually, to come here. setting up shop oh, in Nigeria, oh, in Lagos, okay. somewhere in Victoria <laughs> Island or Ikoi or something like that. Okay, cool. We're ready, Tony. We're not cool. joking. We're ready for you. Who wants to talk about we it? Want something. We, want, we want more than martinis and the Bloody Marys and the sex on the beach and all those cocktails. We want something, you know, fun and exciting and, okay. you know, the eye-popping cocktails. That's what okay. we want. So I'll, have to come do, I'll, I'll start my market research tomorrow. Fantastic. Cool. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Tony, please. Cool. Okay, so we're we waiting for this to cool off. Oh, by the way, Tony has more cocktails for you guys, so just hold on a minute. But in the meantime, let's take another question from the audience. Can we get one question, two questions? Okay, we have a man at the back in red with the glasses on top. Good afternoon, Mr. Tony. Hello. Yeah, it's nice having you here in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, my first question is, what are your criteria for creating a recipe for, or for mixing a, a drink? Do you have a, you have a recipe for mixing drinks, right? It's, uh, it's okay. really hard to hear, just here. He doesn't understand your accents. No. Hello. Sorry. Hello. Hello. I will explain okay. better to you. Are uh, you sure? Yeah. I Change will. your accent. Okay. Kubo, cotton so. Oh yeah. Try. Now. Now. With British accent. <laughs> you are not ready. Please, I've never, I have been, never been out of this country, so I can't use British accent. You don't watch TV, me. I do. I do. I do. I do. Hello, hello. Please, Abio, you can help me to translate it to him, please. Okay. My question is this. I got this yeah, My question is this. My question is this. You are Wait. a great chef. Right? No, sorry. Yeah. When you say one sentence, I repeat. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. You have done a lot of drinks, right? Stop. You have done a lot of drinks, right? Yes. Good. What are your criteria for doing it? What and what do you mix together to do the drinks? What are your criteria for doing it? What and what do you mix together to get it, you know, to get it what? Done. 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 No. <laughs> um, so I think the criteria is, you know, you, you can't make things for yourself. It's like when you cook. You, if you cook for yourself, you're not going to cook something great. If you make drinks for yourself, you're not gonna make great drinks. So you must always make drinks for someone else, for your customer, for, for somebody you love. So you, know, it, it, you distance yourself from it and you put that energy, that passion, that love into it. Um, and the, I suppose the criteria of, uh, of what we put in it or, or how or what we mix together is about what we're trying to say to that other person, to that customer, to those customers. So, for example, with one of the next drinks we're going to show you, snow was about uh, a very particular moment in, like, I suppose, in growing up in, in the UK, where when the snow comes down, as a, as a child, you stick your tongue out and the snowflake lands on top of it. So what we wanted to do is recreate that moment to take people back to their childhoods and that, that moment of joy the first time they did that. So the, the moment, I suppose, the criteria and the ingredients had to fit in with that concept to be able to make that person feel that way. Thank you. To bring Thank them you. that joy. Thank you. Then how do you determine your cost? Because I decided, I, I have observed things with all the chefs that have been coming. I've been trying to ask this question. Uncle, well done. In the restaurant, we work with restaurants. 
we consider food cost. What I mean by food cost? But before you sell anything hard, you must consider your cost for that production. Do you get me right? Yeah. <laughs> How do you now determine your cost? Because you people don't measure. Most of the chefs have observed them very well. They put, they put, they put and put this and put and put. This guy is passionate too. So oh. when we are talking about restaurant, we want to do it to make profit. We have to consider the cost. <laughs> like our food cost percentage in Nigeria is 45. 40 to 42, 45 percent highest. Yeah. Now, if I have to consider what all the chef has been doing, honestly, it will be more than 55. We measure absolutely everything. For our recipe sheets, everything is measured to the millimeter. Even behind the bar, we use sh like shakers and measures. So absolutely everything throughout the business, from one end, from the kitchen, to all the way to the bartender, uh, working behind the bar, serving the customer, will measure absolutely everything. Tony, take a high five for that, because I didn't understand what he said. Yeah. Well done. Put your hands together, guys. <laughs> we got a question in there. <laughs> we have another question at the back. Let's have the guy in black, please. Oh, we're taking people in front. One second. Hello, Chef. Hello, how are you? Yeah, my first question is that uh, in all your mixing, do, you, are they all, do they all come in uh, alcoholic or what? Or do you have something that's not alcoholic? That is number one. Number two is that... Uh, alcoholic or not an alcoholic? <laughs> Tony, All your Tony, I'm so proud of you. You need to move to Nigeria. <laughs> you, you got that. Now. Um, we mix um, both alcoholic, non-alcoholic. Uh, we mix um, drinks that are appropriate for each person. Not everybody drinks. Not everybody wants to drink. Not everybody can drink. Not everybody should drink. So what I think you need to do is appreciate the different cultures, the different personalities, the people that are, you know, women that are pregnant, you know, people mm -hmm. that just can't drink because it's bad for them. So, you know, you need to have a repertoire of non-alcoholic drinks, but also alcoholic drinks. Uh, because, you know, people that don't drink are still your customers. You know, are, they're just as important because they are still paying for stuff and they still need to enjoy themselves. So you need to give them that space to be able to do that. Secondly, in all your mixing here, yeah, do you consider uh, fruit in, I mean, among the ingredients you are using here? Do you use fruit here? Yeah. So, sorry, do we use food? Fruit. Fruit. Oh, really? Fruit. 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 Yeah, oh, we okay. use, I mean, we use lots of different stuff. Uh, we use fruit, um, we use spices, uh, we use some, we use stones. We use clay. I'm sorry, did you say you use stones? We use stones. How we does that clay. work? Um, well, we distill the stones uh, in a still. Stones? Stones. Okay. Yeah. And the clay, how does the clay work? The clay, we dry, we powder, and then distill that with, with a neutral spirit, and we distill it over in the still. So you've got the flavor of clay. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You see, so we're that. not joking when we <laughs> said our more science students. So. Okay, let's have another question here. The Negronis. Okay, cool. Hi, Tony. Hello. How are you doing? Good, and you? It's nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, so, I'd like to say we have lots of mixologists in Nigeria. Sorry, my voice is really quirky. So we have lots of mixologists in Nigeria who have yep. trained abroad and also trained here at home. And some of us have been to London Cocktail. Yep. We've been to Tales of Cocktails. Some of us are ambassadors. Super. And what we would like to know is how do you think we can put Nigeria on the cocktail map? Some of us have won competitions, uh, but you know, we're, not, we're not there yet. We feel yeah. there's so much that can be done. You're here in Nigeria now. Um, you know, I feel like there's something you, know, you can do to help um, aspiring mixologists and yeah. people who are already mixologists. So yeah. how do you think you can help? And, uh, and also, how do you think we can put Nigeria on the cocktail map? Well, I think what's important is the it, 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 it's, it sounds like it's a, 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 a growing market. It's a new way of doing things here. Am I correct? Is it a growing market? Would you say? Yeah. So, so I mean... Excuse me. Oh. 
So like five years ago, it was a growing market, but yeah. now it is a market. There is yeah. a market. Okay, uh, super. So as long as we're still a developing country, like still a growing market too. Yeah, no, as long as we are a developing country, it's still a growing market. However, the profession has grown. Okay. Good. Now, there's some people who are tails attache. So Tales of Cocktails has recognized some people yeah. and they've made them attaches for Nigeria. Super. Some people have competed and they've won by sending in recipes and they've, I mean, they've come up as winners. So, I mean, in terms of the profession, it is not a growing profession. It is okay. a profession. Okay. So yes, the market okay. is growing. I know how to answer that. Yeah. What I would suggest, and this is what we had to do like um, 20 years ago in uh, the UK, because it wasn't necessarily a profession that people respected. What it was was a bunch of people having fun behind the bar and getting drunk. That, that's the way we were perceived. But over the years, what we did is we just said, no, we're professionals. We're going to be more like chefs. We're going to create recipes. We're going to write those recipes down. We're going to educate our customers. We're going to take the level up. We're going to work with the drinks brands. We're going to educate. We're going to kind of get the, the, the brands to help sponsor articles, to get articles written. We're going to write articles. We're going to get all of these people to come together. We're going to create, uh, at that time, a very small bar show so that we can communicate. We're going to meet on Sundays. We're going to talk about these things. We're going to create this scene, and we're going to self-perpetuate it. We're going to get people to, more people involved. We're going to write to people from all over the world. We're going to go and visit Tales of the Cocktail. We're going to go and visit all of these different things. You know, and that's how that scene grows. But one of the, I would say, the most important things is educating your customer. Because the more educated your customer is, the more they'll support you, the more customers you have, the more revenue you have, the more you have to be able to spend on, on the magazines and the articles and writing these things, the more prominence you will have, the more respected you will have. And then you can start getting in more international speakers over. You can visit more international fairs and it becomes you know, integrated and more linked to everybody else. Okay. Does that answer the question? Okay, I have a question because you had said a lot of the perception initially was that it's just a bunch of people behind the bar yeah. getting drunk. Yeah. Have there been moments where you're trying out a recipe and you're getting high on your own stuff? <laughs> no. Well, we, we, again, we're very careful. You know, al alcohol is a drug. You need to be careful with it. You need to treat it with respect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> you don't see chefs eating everything they make. Yeah. <laughs> We don't drink everything we make. Okay, okay. When we do try stuff, we have uh, a, 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 a certain time in the day at three o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. where the whole team gets together and we taste a tiny little bit, okay. we spit it out, uh, and then we try the next thing. Okay. It's like a sommelier would try wine. You know, you don't get sommeliers in restaurant drinking all the wine. Okay. You, know, we're, you know, we're consummate professionals. Okay. You know, and no one behind the bars ever drinks. You know, it's, a, it's, it, it's taken as a, a, a real job. Okay. You know, you don't go to an office, you know, and start drinking at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we start at five o'clock. We shouldn't start drinking at five o'clock. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, so we have shorts with There's everyone. What are we doing with this? We're going to try out the drink. Yeah, I would say, so this is the superiore. So this is what we've been cooking, uh, and this is going out. So does uh, everyone have a shot? A shot? <laughs> when, you were, when you were in secondary school, you used to sit All at right, the back, Abby. Because you didn't want to sit in front, because you didn't want to be in front of the teacher. No cocktails for you. Do we have some more? No, that this, we had to bring this from the UK. Okay. So this was brought There's in. There's a few more here. Oh, we have some more here. We can have some more, some more at the back. There's a gentleman here. Is Oh, gentleman. Yeah. oh, he has a question. Okay, can we, can we, take, can we take his question, please? Uh, my guys are busy serving drinks. Okay, okay, fantastic. The guy in the bumper jacket. There you go. All right, Sonny. Hello. Hi. Nice drink. Thank you. you uh, uh, you've had it already? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I follow a few chefs on YouTube. I want to know if you have a YouTube channel where after now we can go and then get some recipes, watch your videos, watch how you make it, 
yeah. see you behind your kitchen bars and see how things are done. It, uh, sa, or sa, Instagram uh, and... Uh, uh, sorry, you have to repeat yourself. I want to know if you have a YouTube channel. Oh, a where YouTube we can catch yeah. up with you, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the really amazing thing about YouTube is when, because a lot of us, when, like I'm going to show my age now, but when a lot of us started, all we did was went to rare bookshops and bought like these rare books that had cocktail recipes in. Now there's millions of cocktail books. But one of the things that you never see in a cocktail book is how people are moving, how people are stirring how many times they stir it, how many times, the way they pour it, the style of which they pour it, the finesse and the movement that they have when they do that. So for me, start a YouTube channel and, and just show what people are doing, amazing. And if you, if you want to, Tony, but you have I'll, the... I'll take part if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a, your recipe book. Yeah. If you say that a YouTube channel is not as effective as it should be, yeah. then what happens... So what is a recipe book about? Because I know you have one currently and then you have another one that's yeah. coming up. So what is that? What do we get to learn from the recipe book? Um, the, the advantage of a recipe book, I think, is that you interpret it for yourself. Okay. So, you know, you have a recipe, but your movements the way you make it, your palate will okay. adjust it to how you want it to taste. So therefore, you become the owner of that recipe. Recipe, oh. Yeah. So it's possible that you would do the same thing and I will do the same thing and we'll have two different results. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, fine. Do we have another question? Okay, we have the gentleman over here. Is there a chart? Can we go in front so we can see everybody? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Hello, That's Tony. Better. See you all. Hi. <laughs> Tony, I'm here. This way. Hello. Oh. Sorry. That's your mic. That's me. Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, I think you're uh, more than a science student. You're a <laughs> chemical engineer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is, um, are you willing to set up um, like a training school or institute in, in Nigeria, in Lagos, so that um, you, you can pass some of your knowledge to our Nigerian mi uh, mixologist? So he wants to know if you set up a training school for Nigerian mixologists. We, what, what we do each year is we, uh, twice a year, we open up the doors of the drink factory and we have students from all over the world. So, you know, that's the possibility and you just apply online uh, and come over and usually work at the bars but kind of, you know, come and you know, see what we do, physically work with Mark and the guys. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's, at the moment, that's our learning thing. Otherwise, I'll spread myself too thin. All right. Oh, we have a lot of questions. Okay, let's have the, the gentleman at the back with, with the hat. While we wait for the microphone, hold up while we wait. Let's have this question, please. Hello. Hi, Tony. How hi. are you? Good, thank um, you. I like to think of myself as a drink connoisseur. I love Good. to drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hide it. I think whenever um, mixologists make drinks, I think it's, it's a really beautiful expression of their art. Yeah. However, I wanted to ask you about your own signature. Um, I've had the opportunity to have lots of drinks from different bartenders all over the world. And yeah. I know every single bartender has their own signature. So please tell me a little bit about yours and how you and your brand has been able to stand out from all the other mixologists that we have in the world. Um, I, I think I'd answer that by saying we don't really have a signature drink. I mean, we have the Prairie Oyster, the Prairie Oyster. things that we've become known for, um, and they are signatures within the bars. But because I think we're so diverse in the way we... What's that mean? I think that's the microphone. Huh? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's that we've become known for creativity and for processes and using new processes, but also for a certain standard and quality of what we do. So I think if you come to the bars, and each single bar is very, very different in aspects, but also atmosphere, um, you know, what you'll get is something new. Uh, and we're 
because we're constantly progressing and constantly coming up with new ideas, new processes, and new, new, and new drinks, people kind of expect to come to us and find something new. And I think that's more what we know. That, that's kind of like our signature, um, rather than there just be one particular thing that everyone knows us by. Even though I think there are certain drinks that have gone global from us, um, you wouldn't necessarily find those in our bar because okay. by that point, everyone else is doing them. All righty. OK, so we take the Hi, Tony. Hello. Um, so you said you have a lab, and you yep. do quite a lot of R&D. Yeah. I mean, that must come, come at a cost. So my question to you is, do you hold patents to some of these cocktails you develop? A patent? No, you can't. Yeah, do you get a patent for them? No, we can't, because you're using other people's products. Okay. Oh, okay. So, well, believe me, we've tried. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would be sitting quite happily on a yacht right now. <laughs> but it, it's a lovely idea, but I think, you know, it, it, it's impossible because it's not like um, you can patent some food and you can package it and then you can send it off, it, you know, or sell it to a supermarket. That's one thing. I mean, we can make a product, which we have done in collaboration with another company, uh, and that's one thing that we, we're exploring. Uh, and that you can patent, of sorts. But um, at the moment, you can't patent cocktails. OK, all right. OK, so let's have two more questions. Oh. Two more questions. Have, let's have the lady in front, please. Cool. Yeah, we can do this Hi, Tony. as well. I, it's, I'm quite happy with all the questions. Okay. Hi, Tony. Hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. You said this is your first time in Nigeria. Yeah. So I think it will be proper to give you a Yoruba name and an Igbo name. <laughs> yes. My Nigerian friends in London will be very proud right now. <laughs> okay. So we're going to give you Olalekun. Okay. As a Yoruba name and Namdi. <laughs> As an Igbo name. Honestly, I think a Namde sits well with you. <laughs> you look like an Inamde. <laughs> then secondly, um, what would you say is your brand of um, alcohol? Is it whiskey? Is it vodka? Is it gin? Um, I think it's more, if I'm working on a project, I tend to kind of look at that project as a whole. So if I'm working on a whiskey drink, then I'll taste lots of different whiskeys and I'll go out and drink whiskeys. If I'm abroad, uh, I'll taste what is made locally. So, for example, if I'm in Japan, I'll drink sake, sochu, and, okay. and other things. So, I'm not kind of like a one, one drink, kind one of drink person. Yeah. I kind of just go with, go with the flow. All right, we're running out of time, and you have to do the snow drink. Okay, cool. All right, let's do that, okay? I'm sorry, Should guys. We'll come yeah, back to cool. you. Oh. Sorry. Keep getting caught. Cool. Um, so the next drink we're going to show you is the snow. Um, this is a triple distillation of moss, moss. flintstone, flintstone, and clay. Where are we going to get flintstone? <laughs> I'm sorry, is, where can we get that in Nigeria? Is that you can buy it now. You, okay, all right. You source it. Um, so what we do is we've got a distillation unit, okay. uh, and we put the ingredients in that separately with a neutral grain spirit okay. and then we distill that over and then we blend it like a whiskey okay but it doesn't it's not nothing like a whiskey okay All right. um and again this was based around that kind of concept of a snowflake Snow landing oh, on okay thing. all right cool this is this this will be interesting are we, are we gonna make it now or do you have it a lot of our drinks are kind of made okay before we come because right, cool. they've they use such like um high-tech equipment oh. you can't really carry it around carry anywhere it. Okay, cool. um, no we also make kind of drinks that are very simple and very kind of thing that you can be stirred down but we thought for today we'd showcase something that maybe no one had ever seen before okay all right cool no problem so, so they're african all exclusive <laughs> <laughs> so they're all they're, we're all gonna have a taste of this right mm -hmm. okay so while yeah. we wait for them to pour it in the cups let's have one more question one more question, and then we'll close it from the audience. Let's have the, the man in black, please. Okay, maybe two more, two more. Hello, Tony. Hi, how are you? And how far to every lazy Nigeria youth? So basically, my question is, um, the type of service you basically render, um, is it kind of, okay, let me, for example, put myself in a case study. Can I want- Pick up. Pick up and hear you, speak up. 
Okay, let me, for example, put myself as for a case study. I visit your bar and I see how interesting the kind of how interesting the kind of um, Over me, you mix together. Nigerian, I can't hear you. Yeah, um, this is the way I speak, though. Oh, no, I'm right? like, you know, foreign. Right, so, um, so I'm, I visit your bar for the first time and I enjoy what you made, what you made for me. So, and I wanted you to come to my house to make something like that. Me probably I'm having on my birthday or something. Do you kind of go in at a kind of outdoor or indoor event um, service, aside from your bar service, basically? Uh, as in, I think what he's asking is, do you have any specialized, personalized service other than yeah, like, like other other services like just a bar service? Okay, so other yeah. than just bar services, do you have like home service? Home service, home or service, or party, party, oh, okay. party, party, party setting. Um, yeah, we do. I mean, we weddings do weddings and things like that. If if people want us to do them, yeah, we do them. Oh. We've done um, famous fashion brands. We've done famous artists, we've done musicians, we've done weddings, we've done our friends' parties, we do events. Um, it, it depends if it's interesting okay. and we want to do it. All right. Okay, guys, our time is up.